is going on guys? This is DJ Clan Smasher and today I'm bringing you an episode that has to deal with Town Hall 9, um, Gola Loon Air Attack. So we're going to show you how to dominate the air with these kinds of strategies. I'm going to be showing you rocks right here, showing you a nice attack, um, pretty much starting with the Golem and creating a funnel. So send in the baby dragon at 6 o'clock to make sure that the queen and the king will eventually be able to get straight to the middle. Notice those wizards that are at 9 o'clock. It's very important to place those wizards because if not, your queen is going to go all the way around and you do not want that to happen. If it does happen, it's usually not too bad unless you're dealing with a CC like this because um, the baby dragon might stay alive and it might give you a hard time, especially if the queen dies. So it's very important to try to get that CC taken care of. But if it's a lava hound, it's always nice to have the queen just walk around the base to get rid of some of the structures. Um, but anyways, this was a fresh hit. And rocks right here does a great job of sending in a very nice funnel, making sure that he's able to, uh, that rocks is able to take care of the enemy queen, the clan castle, and at least one air defense if possible. As you can tell, um, was able to take care of two air defenses, so that made a huge difference. And then after that, you have to choose a pathway. You're either going to go clockwise or counterclockwise. And what do you keep in mind to try to figure out what side you're going to go ahead and choose? So what you're going to go ahead and take a look at is the air sweepers. Um, depending on the air sweepers, you usually want to go behind the air sweepers. You rarely want to go right towards the air sweepers because those things are going to just keep blowing and it's going to make it very impossible for your troops to get through the base. So it's always important to keep that in mind and those are the key features um, into choosing the uh, an air attack um, for specific Town Hall 9s. So also keeping into consideration the wizard tower locations and... Um, that's pretty much the main thing. So you want to heal. You want to place a heal spell for your um, for your loons when they're about to deal with wizard towers, especially if you know you're not going to have any coverage for um, from your lava hound. If you have, like for instance, there's some bases usually in CWL and stuff like that. Like more people are cognizant about this, but for the most part, like if you're in a regular clan, you might face um. People with, you know, more popular uh, Town Hall 9 bases. So most of the time, the Wizard Towers are in range of the air defense. If that is the case, you might not even need a heal spell. Because the Lava Hound is going to be tanking for your loons. The, the, the Wizard Tower is going to be locked down on the Lava Hound. While the loons can just swiftly cross right through, take care of the defenses, and not have to deal with the Wizard Tower. So anyways, that is the main thing. You want to make sure that you create a big funnel... Um, and if you're only going to use one golem to to um, get into the base, you have to keep in mind that you have to create that funnel pretty quickly. Because if you're only using one lava hound, I mean one uh, golem, that means that you you don't have as much tankage. If you're using two, you have a little bit more leeway because it's usually one that's taking the most hits. As you can see right here, I'm going to be using two golems. So right here, I started the attack at the very top, and sometimes you got to keep in mind, guys, about some of the bases. Like for instance, here. There is no reason for me to put the golem at the very beginning because then the golem is just going to take hits for nothing and it's going to start dying and I have so much to funnel. So I knew that there was nothing to have any damage versus my uh, my wizards. So that's why I placed the wizards first. And then the other cool trick that I did, if you want to go ahead and back up to check it out, it's the two golems. The way I placed them is I knew that the mortars would be able to shoot each other pretty much. So I place one golem first, and then the other one. That way those mortars are shooting the golems instead of my wizards. Once I did that and I created a big funnel, I sent in my king, my queen, a few more wizards, and a rage spell. I, sh I didn't really need the rage spell, but I just wanted to make sure that I could take care of all these things in the middle. So that's the reason why I chose to use the rage spell. I could have saved the rage spell, and if you do save the rage spell, where do you want to use the rage spell? So the main place that you want to use the rage spell is at is where the air defenses are at, especially when there's like two air defenses at a time. So notice right here, guys, I picked going um, from 6 o'clock, um, going to 3 and then to 12. So I picked a counterclockwise direction. I knew that the first air defense was going to be taken care of by my heroes, which are still standing, which is very important, guys, because... Some pe I've noticed this a lot, and it's important to make sure to address this. Some people will just send in their heroes, and even though there's nothing that's hitting them for a while, they'll just keep them going until they die. If you notice that your heroes are still standing, just go ahead and start the air attack. Because then that means that you're going to have a lot more um, a lot more cleanup because those heroes are going to be helping you. Like, for instance, right here, my queen is able to take care of that wizard tower pretty quickly and is able to um, pretty much take some of the chunk off. Um, which makes it a lot easier for my air attack to overpower this base. 
So this was a fresh hit as well, guys, against Mariana Trench. We had a very nice war. We actually beat them in that one. If you want to see the recap on that on that um war, definitely check it out. You should be able to check it out in one of my previous videos that I recently made. So anyways, guys, now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to show you one more attack that Rox did. And I, actually, I'm going to show you a sketch that Rox did for this specific base. That way you guys can kind of understand what is going on. It's going to look a little weird, and this is what sketches typically look like, <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Um, it's not to try to scare you or anything, but it's just so that you know what you're looking for in a base. So this is what the base looks like, guys. Um, so, rocks, look, that is the sketch right there. Pretty much a baby dragon to create a funnel with the king, the queen, of uh, some valks, and, and then um, just choosing the direction. So it was going to be counterclockwise. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and check out the attack. Places a golem, very important, because if the golem was not placed and the baby dragon was placed first, that archer tower would have taken care of that baby dragon, and that is not what you want. So then notice because there is only one golem, uh, Rox places the queen right away to help with the funneling. Um, he already knew that the baby dragon was going to take care of the left portion of 6 o'clock. So then um, that made it to where the king and the queen can go straight to the middle. And the cool thing that I like about Rox is that um, that Rox brings in two Valkyries just to help out. Um, and it's real nice because if you notice right there, the two Valkyries plus the few wizards are able to take care of that king. Which isn't an issue when it comes to an air attack. But it's always nice to take care of the king because sometimes what will happen is your balloons are just chasing the king at the very end trying to kill it. And they can spend so much try time trying to do that. And then you run out of the um, you run out of time. So then you get like a 98% or 99%, and it was because your balloons were just chasing the king. So if you have an advantage and you can take out both heroes with your kill squad, that is awesome. That is definitely something you want to do. Um, you also want to enter in a way that you can take care of the clan castle, the archer queen, and also, if possible, a few air defenses. If not, at least take care of um, the wizard towers. Um, that's always a bonus or an expo. In this case, an expo was taken care of. So now the air portion is started. So then there goes the first haste, and then the lava hound is tanking for these. And then after that, there goes some more loons. So you're pretty much kind of creating a pathway so that the loons go the right direction. And Rox is doing something called like pinching. So pretty much what you're doing right there is creating that funnel. So starting um, the defenses from the outer to inner, kind of, because um, if the loons are just sent on one direction. They're just gonna go all around, not even touch that expo, and go through all the air def uh, through all the defenses. And then after that, um, you know, the expo is gonna be shooting down the balloons. So it's always important to pinch when it comes to those kinds of weird bases where the with the isolated ring, like the isolated um, expo or something like that, or even the isolated air defense because that can be deadly. So it's always important to keep that in mind when you're doing this attack. Um, anyways guys, so this is going to be wrapping up this attack right here. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned from this. Um, definitely subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video if you felt that this was very useful. And if you still are having a hard time, definitely comment below and I can try to address to see if there's something that I missed or if there's anything that you guys were having a hard time. And notice that swag. Great job, Rox. Thanks again for tuning in and keep calm and clash on guys. See you next time.